Ever since getting into emulation handhelds, I've always wanted cross-save compatibility. x86 handhelds with Steam have always had this feature, but this is something that Android has always been lacking. The ability to load everything from your save states to the saves themselves, as well as your configs, and so much more, is an incredible feature to have. Have too many Android devices? Let me show you how to get this set up so you can enjoy cross-save compatibility on all your Android handhelds. <laughs> I have a couple different Android handhelds right now, and the libraries on each of them can vary. However, when you do have the same game on two different devices, it's nice to have the same save file between the two. The first thing that we need to do is to head over to the Google Play Store and download SyncThing. It's available for free and should work on all your Android devices. Once you have that downloaded, all you need to do is open it up and we'll take a look at the app. With SyncThing installed, all we have to do is go through the basic setup process, give it permission to access your storage and manage your files. Then give it permission to access your micro SD card and your location so it can see other devices on your network. With that done, it's going to come up with a message here telling you do you want to turn off battery optimization for sync thing. Make sure to turn this off, otherwise Android might close the app in the background. It's also worth noting that I haven't really noticed any extra battery life drain while using this app. Go ahead and let the app run in the background so it can sync when it's done. By default, there's a camera folder here, but we can go ahead and delete that as that's not a feature that we want to have transferred between our devices. Open it up and click the trash can at the top right corner, then go ahead and delete it. We need to copy our device ID from SyncThing to another device. Since the device ID is really long, I recommend using a note app like Google Keep to copy and paste it over. The first thing that we need to do is to open up the menu and scroll down to the bottom and show device ID. Press the copy icon and copy that over to Google Keep. Next, grab your other Android device and copy the device ID over. With that copied, head back over to SyncThing. Click the device tab, then go ahead and add your device. For the device ID, just paste that in. Then type in the name of the device we're adding. Leave the library as a dynamic library. With that done, just go ahead and click add in the top right corner. Now we just need to hop back over to our other device and add that one in. What we have essentially done here is introduce the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus to my Retroid Pocket Flip. Now we just need to confirm the sync. Back on the 3 Plus, we're going to swipe down the top menu bar. You're going to notice that there's a new notification that's been popping up. You can see here that it shows that the Retroid Pocket Flip wants to connect. Tap on that, then click add in the top right corner. Now that the two devices can kind of connect to each other this way, we have to make sure that we set up some folders that we want synced. To set up the folders that we want to sync, we're going to set them up from the Retroid Pocket Flip. If you're seeing unknown beside any of the devices, just give the app a restart. With that set up though, let's go ahead and get those folders ready. Head over to the Folder tab and click Create. The first folder that we're going to make here is for our BIOS files. Go ahead and type the name of the folder in that we're creating. Then under the directory, just navigate to the RetroArch BIOS folder. This should be stored under your main device, under RetroArch. Then just head to the System folder and click Allow. Check off which devices you want this folder to sync to, then click Create. And with that, the BIOS folder is now one of our syncable folders. But we should go ahead and add a few more. Next, let's add our save states in and our saves. I'm just going to go ahead and make one for the save folder. Now I just have to select the folder where the saves are stored. Head back to the RetroArch folder, then click on the saves folder. Then click use this folder and allow. For every folder that you add, make sure you check on which devices you want it to sync to. There are a few other folders that I recommend setting up, so let's do those next. The next one that we're going to set up is for our save states. I'm just going to call it states, then link it to my 3 plus, and then I'm going to navigate back to my main folder, RetroArch, then states. Any app, game, or emulator that has a local folder like this can be synced across your devices. However, if the app in question is storing data under the Android folder on the device itself, that's not something that can work with this app. Back on the other device, drag down the notification bar and you're going to see all these different folders that want to connect. The first one that I'm going to click on here is the BIOS folder. All we have to do is tell the app where that folder is stored on this device. I'm just going to go ahead and navigate to the RetroArch folder, then link that. This is going to have to be done with every single folder that you want to sync between your two devices. 
the notification for each file folder that you want to have synced will disappear as soon as you link them. If you have a lot of folders that you want to link, I recommend trying with one or two first just to make sure it works, then go back in and add the others later. On my device at least, I also had to expand the notification bar for the app itself to see the individual folder notifications. This can obviously take a little while, especially if you have a lot of folders that you want to sync. If you're not using certain features like save states, you don't obviously have to link these folders. When I got down to the last notification, I tried clicking on it, but it didn't do anything. That's because you still have to open the notification and expand it to get to that folder. Once this is set up on one device, all you have to do is link a new device to it and it'll move all your files over. It's kind of neat because at the end of the day, if you bring your device back and all your devices are turned on with sync thing up, that save is already on your other devices. This is definitely a game changer and a really big reason to own Android devices. There are a couple other fun little folders that you can add, so I'm going to go ahead and add another one here. The config files themselves is also another thing that I would recommend setting up, especially if your devices are very similar. Retroarch config files are stored under the main device, Retroarch, then config. This will store things like remap files or other things like your core settings. Back on the 3 Plus, all we have to do is to navigate to that folder. I'm going to go ahead and do that, then I'm going to show you what it looks like. With Ruby loaded up on the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus here, I'm just going to go ahead and save my game. With that saved, all we need to do now is to load it up on the Retroid Pocket Flip. And as you can see, it recognized the save and automatically transferred it over. Now unfortunately, there's one big caveat to get our save to move over. I've only noticed this with RetroArch so far, but there might be other apps that are affected too. To get your save to move over, the thing that you need to make sure to do is to completely close down RetroArch. With the game open on the other device, you can see, yep, the save transferred over okay. To make sure that there's no hiccups when transferring your data over, make sure that it's set to auto start when your device boots. If you search the settings menu, then look Look for auto launch management or something similar on your Android device, you should be able to find it. If you have any trouble getting the app to auto boot, you're going to have to load up the app first to get the sync to start. That being said, I'm still having issues getting this app to start with my device. If you're also setting this up on a Retroid device, make sure to shut off battery manager as well. You definitely don't want any battery saving feature shutting off the app in the background. I also like to set up a transfer folder to transfer random files between my devices. Following the same steps as before, it's pretty straightforward to set up. For any folder you create, make sure to check off which device you want it to sync it to. I forgot to check this off once, and I couldn't figure out why the other device wasn't seeing the folder. So yeah, if you're like me and you've made that same mistake, just go back in and make sure you check off the device that you want it to sync it to. Even if you transfer a file over, it might not show up right away. Just give it a couple seconds to a couple minutes and it should show up. I left the app running in the background then came back and it showed up. Nice. Overall, I'm really happy with how this app works, and I think you're going to have a lot of fun with it. And in case you're wondering, yes, it does obviously work for transferring your games over from one device to another. Even something simple like renaming a file will automatically transfer over to your other device. If you have any questions regarding the app, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.